Hi guys, uh, I just wanted to share my experience here with working with the HDF5 library. The library is used, well, to save data in, in form of files. <laughs> of course, this can be done with, for example, uh, C++ functions like this. Uh, you just open a file, write something, close the file, and so on. Um, the problem here is with the structure. If you have uh, any more or less complicated format, then you start uh, running into some problems. And let me show you one example. Let's suppose you have uh, one array, uh, which a two-dimensional array of integers, which you want to have uh, extendable. And if it's a single file, that's not a problem. You just append to the bottom of the file. But if you have two of those, you would need either two files or you will need some sort of complicated way of saving them in the like interleaved block type fashion. Or maybe you would have to rewrite the whole thing if you want to put one table on top and the other table at the bottom and so on. So as you can see, if you, if you have uh, more than one type of data or several tables of different sizes, then you're already starting to see um, the need for some sort of complicated library of keeping the data. So HDF5, it allows you to have um, like multi-dimensional arrays of any data types and the, the data types can be just simple types like floating point or it can be your custom types. So in this case, in the latter case, it will look like a database table where you would just have like records in one dimension and um, each record can contain uh, several simpler types, which will be integers or floating points or even uh, Boolean type um, of, of data. Another benefit in the HTF5, you can, you can compress them on the fly as you save them. And each of those data sets can also have some attributes, which basically just means like a single copy of a parameter. Um, also, they can be grouped into folders and uh, interlinked into like more complex structure. So you can create like shortcuts from one folder to another, assign attributes to the folder and so on and so on. Um, I'll show you real quick why I use it. Um, I have a simulation that uh, models uh, like a plate bending. The idea is to have like an ice flow um, floating under the action of waves. And uh, it models like I, I have the deflection and uh, different types of stresses and bending moments and such. Um, and I need to save that to be able to kind of like scroll through the simulation to see the results. And the, the data here is, uh, there's obviously a location of each node in the mesh, but during the simulation, the, um, the topology of the mesh itself may change. So the number of nodes may change, the number of elements may change. Um, and at each step, I have some type of data saved, like maybe it's like a maximum stress or the number of iterations to reach the solution and so on and so on. So you've seen how um, I put this into a single file and I'll just uh, point out real quick. So essentially they get uh, written into a single file with the extension h5 and the data is automatically compressed as it's written 
and it can be extended with more and more frames. Uh, one thing that uh, I wanted to show, it's more of a design choice. So you can see here that there's just one array for the elements, but of course I have more than one time step. And the, the way that I do that, I just each new time step, I just append append to the bottom of the table. So the table just keeps, keeps growing longer and longer and longer. Um, it is possible to write new data set for each time step. So I can have like LMS0, LMS1, LMS2 for each of the time steps. But in my, um, in this case, I chose to do this differently. I write, write the steps in a table and in this table, there is an offset where should I start reading the nodes in the node table and the elements in the element table. So um, going back to the elements, for example, if I wanted the, the second time step, I would just start from the element 900 something. Why is it better than keeping separate data sets? Because in, in the HDF5 library, you, you can't really delete the data set. And you can unlink it from the file system, but you cannot really remove it and reclaim the disk space. So what I do here instead, I can trim my data and it will trim the table. And then it will allow this space, which is unclaimed but the space can be filled later on with the new data. So it's more of like a streaming type of thing. Mm, some other, um, some other uh, implementations of um, numerical modeling, they go a different way. Like I have this simulation here of uh, colliding geometry and the way that they save the files. They write an image file, the PNG file, and they also have the animated GIF file. And then for each time step, they write their three-dimensional geometry as OBJ files. They also have separate text files, which show the parameters of their simulation. And also some sort of um, another data set and more data and some polygonal geometry. And they even have some strange file with zero size here. So it's another option of saving data and it's not particularly worse or better. Uh, a couple of difficulties with this approach is that if you wanted to trim everything that's beyond say a step 150, you will just have to sort of go and manually delete those. And if you wanted to um, store that, you would have to maybe copy the file one by one or zip them up. So HDF5 sort of simplifies that because it, it compresses the data on the fly and, and so on. There are a couple of um, functions that simplify how you would work with files. So first of all, HDF5 library, there's a huge user guide, so it's pretty complex. This is written in the form of a book uh, with chapters where it explains how they have groups and data sets and data types and you can create custom data types and how do you save attributes of each file and process errors and, and everything. So there's this book, uh, it's about 400 pages and it has the um, reference manual for every little API function, it's written in C. Uh, this one is even larger. This this is a manual with 800 pages. So it is a pretty complex library. And of course it um, provides a lot of functionality. But another way to use that is that uh, there's other like wrappers around the original C API. And one of them is H5CPP. Uh, this comes down to just several um, several functions where you can create the file and the data set. You can read it. 
you can well write it you can append but there is another option where you can just like extend the already existing and just uh, execute the right function so it will not overwrite this whole set if you if you set the the parameters properly it'll just write in the portion that was just extended and uh, well you can create the files you can create the data sets uh, append to them or you can just open uh, the files for reading and uh, of course it's much easier uh, doesn't require you reading the this whole 400 page book and there's a couple of uh, tools that I wanted to show so first of all um, this is uh, how I implemented here um, I create the file like this by calling the create function and I create three data sets by invoking the create function uh, one thing to notice here I can set the maximum dimensions to unlimited which meaning that it will be able to extend the size of the data set but it will also require this chunk parameter because it will extend it in chunks which will be appended to the bottom of the file the other thing here I have a um, zip compression parameter which I set to 3 uh, it ranges from 0 which is no compression to 9 which is maximum and I found that if I set it to maximum it does slow down my um, my simulation you can visibly see that it runs slower but if I set it to 3 it, it reduces the file size but doesn't slow down the calculation uh, I also um, over here I open the existing file with the open commands and finally um, I have portions of the code here that work with attributes so those are um, one um, uh, basically just the one copy of the parameter it's not um, a table of many record but just a single sort of attribute for each file so I they can be read with this a read command or they can be written uh, using this bracket syntax um, finally just there's one more thing that I wanted to show you if you notice in those files I have a table with integers a table with floating points but this table has custom uh, format for each record which consists from integers and also some floating points and also some binary data which here is shown as zeros and ones and it's a little bit difficult to implement in the C API because it requires like a preparation of the, the data format then you sort of register it with the HDF5 library and only then you can use it to simplify that um, the developer who created this wrapper he also created a very special tool so the tool generates uh, some code that registers your format um, and it goes like this uh, let's say this is the um, structure that I want to save and the structure only contains just plain data like um, integers, booleans, uh, floating points and such you cannot really save that directly as is into HDF5 it just because it's written in C it really has um, it doesn't have access to all this metadata uh, one option is just to pile up uh, those into one buffer and, and write them out and then read them in the same way the other is uh, to register a custom type within HDF5 and to do that so this tool generates a header 
like this, which calls the corresponding HDF5 C API and registers your custom data type. So uh, that um, header is generated using the um, H5 CPP compiler tool written by Steven Varga. And um, I think he's a, he's a very talented programmer because he, you know, he took the HGF5 library, this huge API, which is 800 pages of all sorts of functions. And he basically trimmed it down to the very simple syntax in C++, which just go, goes as create and read and write um, options. Anyway, I found I, I hope you found this super useful. I hope uh, I hope it explains the uh, the types of problems that this file format solves, and uh, whether you want to use it or not, it's up to you. Uh, <laughs> if there is a certain maybe application where you would find it useful, I hope uh, you found my video helpful and uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you very much.